we are here at CT 97.3 FM. I actually have an interview where we're going to be talking about the growing economy of the video game industry and where is Ghana, let alone Africa and all of that. Stay tuned with us because the live video game TV is going to go on air with us so you can get the inside scoop of the real grip of the conversation. So let's get going. Now, when you think about what the future of work is and how people are making incredible amounts of money and creating jobs for God knows how many people, it just tells you the potential that gaming has. That brings me to where we are as Ghana within the gaming conversation. Where exactly are we is the question. And what sort of impact are we looking to have or to make such that not just the rest of the world noticing, but we're actually going to empower people and empower people who need to be empowered to make impact across the globe. That is the essence of today's conversation. And that is why I want us to focus today on the economics that supports the gaming industry or should support the gaming industry in Africa. I have two persons in the studio with me today. One of them holds the Guinness World Record with Tetris Ultimate. And Triforce has been engaged with pushing forward in the evolving esports industry. Now, he retired from professional gaming in 2015 in Jamaica via Cyberbox Esports League to focus on the management of his esports team, Empire Arcadia, as he continues to work with multiple companies and prominent leaders in the esports industry. Triforce Johnson, Isaiah, and welcome to the studio. Yeah, thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. And um, I hope we have a very meaningful and forward conversation on this because it's very important. It's critical. Yes. Oh, actually, critical. that's a better word. Critical. <laughs> I agree 100%. My second guest has been doing a lot of traveling in the last couple of weeks, speaking at too many conferences for his own liking. But most importantly, has been putting Ghana on the map when it comes to gaming. He's an entrepreneur and a creative polymath with a strong appetite for exploring non-conventional initiatives that challenges the status quo. He has five years in business development, marketing and filmmaking, having co-founded an esports broadcasting venture, Gamer TV, and also directed and produced short films within that realm. He's also a game designer and a creative director as well as a well-acclaimed location-based game chronicles of Klinu, which explores Afrofuturism and the future of the environment. Prince Andrew Adefio is my guest. Prince, you're welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, gentlemen, mm -hmm. let's start off the conversation from where I believe a lot of people will be wondering. Do we have a gaming industry, first of all, in Africa to start things off? Of course, 100%. Actually, it's larger than you think, larger than I thought. Um, you know, I knew Africa already had footprints um, in gaming and in esports, uh, whether it's in Nigeria, whether it's Kenya, whether it's entire um, uh, the the west um, of Africa, going all the way to the north there, um, and obviously there's one in South Africa, which is one of the biggest. But um, Africa as a whole, as a continent, has a huge presence in gaming. The problem is in terms of ownership, leadership. Mm. Africa is greatly suffering in. Uh, in terms of what we can contribute as consumers, we have that, um, definitely, uh, which, what, which is what makes Africa such a very uh, important market. Um, like uh, China, I, I think I mentioned this at the MTN conference where, where I met you at, that um, China nationalized their gaming industry. They came in last, and now they're literally first, <laughs> because they said, we're gonna focus this for Chinese, you know, by Chinese, for Chinese, and they still they don't they make it exclusive. It's inclusive. They are they actually invite the world into the Chinese gaming market, into the Chinese esports market, but they protect the national interests of their Chinese uh, market. And there's a, there's two other countries or two other ethnic groups that can do the very same thing: India and Africa, mm. because these are the three regions of the world. Uh, well, these are the three main countries, uh, well, Africa is a continent, but you get the point I'm trying to say, that have a billion plus people. Mm. So in terms of, um, you know, the, our, do we have anything in gaming? 
Of course we do. We have the consumers. The consumers, you cannot have an industry without consumers. So the first thing you do is you build an infrastructure. Once you build an infrastructure, you have that foundation, then you can build businesses on the, that infrastructure. And then you just find your target demographic, which is a consumer base, and you sell to. That consumer base is what maintains the stability of your actual market and your infrastructure. So that's why China's so powerful. They have 1.4 billion to market to, and they don't need the one point, you never really get the real 100%. But 10% of 1.4 billion is a lot. <laughs> That's ridiculous. But if you look at the potential of Africa, not just on the continent, let's talk about Pan-Africa. So you have 1.3 billion on the continent, but you have another 2 billion worldwide. That puts Africa, potentially, because Africa still has to do the work to get it, but it puts Africa potentially in the forefront. When, when you see the gaming industry in Africa, how would you define it? Apart from the people who represent mm -hmm. various countries at gaming conferences or probably um, at some tournaments or something like that, do we have the infrastructure to call it an industry in the first place? Well, uh, that's a, that's a, there's a yes and a no to that. Mm -hmm. um, because if you compare it to the other leaders in the video game industry and the esports industry, then not really. Um, there are registered esports associations throughout Africa, but they're not in the predominantly black areas of Africa that have the structure set up, South Africa being one of them. They have a great esports industry, but when you look at most of the South African players, they don't reflect you, got, you or I, which is my entire point of like the, the national interest. The ethnic makeup of what it is isn't really us. It's in Africa, yes, but we're kind of like excluded. And not because South Africa excludes us, because there is no infrastructure for the people, the majority of the people who are dark skinned in Africa to get into esports. They either don't have the computers, they don't have the Wi Fi, they don't have the cell phones, they don't have the consoles, whatever it is, that that technological gap bars them from getting involved. So it does exist there, but on a continental level, it doesn't. It mm. still needs a lot of um, time to develop and it still needs um, the companies to get involved, which is what I mentioned at the MTN co Gaming Conference. Mm. We have all the tools, we have all the resources. It's just whether or not they're gonna get involved. Mm. So in terms of esports, like in Ghana, in my experience being here, the largest esports organization in Ghana is Geeks um, Game City, which is GGC, yes, and China, yeah. yeah, and they work literally with Quasi TV. Mm. That's to me, that's absurd. That doesn't exist in America. So when I came here, you know, I'm under the impression, you know, you're, you're from the West, you come over here, nothing's really there, everything is like 30 years behind, and then they have a sports center. FIFA finals, it's like all they're missing is the da -na -na, da -na -na, with the rolling cameras. <laughs> That's all they're That's missing. It. And I was like, wait a minute, time out. And I'm like, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. Like, really? So I met the guy Yuba. I sat down, I've been speaking to him. I've been working with him for like the last eight months now um, since I was here in Ghana. And he just needs corporate support, media, um, technological resources, and corporate support. If they surrounded him and then uh, him along with the Ghana Esports Association and the many different um, esports groups and communities out there were all to surround him. There goes your foundation, there goes your infrastructure, and it can just blow up from there. Meeting uh, Shai Force, who's, who's the founder of Empire Arcadia, like his energy or probably like his interest. Mm -hmm. The, his interest in what I was doing, and the kind of praise he gave me, makes me feel like there's there's more to give. Everyone know in in America knows that you know, Triforce is always representing Africa. And they're like, yeah, but like you live in America. And I'm like, I know, I live here, but I'm African. But your parents are Jamaican. I know, they are Jamaican, born there, raised in the U.S. But I am African. Mm. Chinese people come to America and have children. Their children are not American. They're Chinese that live in America. And if you go, well, you're Chinese American, they go, yeah, yeah, well, I'm Chinese. They, they, they embrace their heritage. But black people, I'm not African. I wasn't born there. I'm American. And you're like, oh, like Jay-Z said, okay. <laughs> That's all you can say about that. So, but I didn't want to go off on a tangent. Going back to Africa, 
we've been here for 15 to 20 years. The big corporations, the telecommunication companies, the technology agencies, and the media companies just are not aware. Um, there have been a lot of gatekeepers in the company. I don't want to like, I don't want to throw no one under the bus, but I don't blame MTN because I know our corporate infrastructures work. The guy at the very top doesn't know what's going down on the street. That's why they have marketing managers and those people and the R&D teams. And a lot of these guys in, throughout the entire community of Ghana, I'm sure this applies for you as well. You've written so many letters, so many emails, so many business plans, roadmaps, and you send it to them. And guess where they go? Ah, uh, this, yeah, this look good. I'll get back to you. It never gets past them. So it never gets to research on R&D. R&D never gets that information to compare it to what's happening in the rest of the world to see what Ghana, potential. the potential Ghana has. So it doesn't go anywhere. It just sits there over and over and over and over again. So can you imagine if Africa or the Africa diaspora gets into video games, the amount of games that we consume in terms of playing competitively or casually. So we need to build an infrastructure for that. And then we need to get the big companies to come in and support the African consumer base in video games, whether it may be for the casual um, consumption or the competitive cons um, consumption. I made friends and I want to get this thing going. I know you guys have been at it for so long. What will be the building blocks that I need to put in place to, to go like, once I get these building blocks in place, we basically can build on that to get to where we want to get. Well, okay. Now, have you guys heard of a game called Orion? It's by Cairo Games. Mm -hmm. and from, from Cairo? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so everyone should know about that game because I was on scene and it was all over the place, right? Do you know how many companies like that exist in the continent? There's, there are many companies, many people making many games in Africa. The, we have a responsibility on this airwave right now. This moment right now is so pivotal, um, pivotal for Africa. You must understand, we have to give out the right and actual factual information about what's going on. Because if we do not, all we're doing is discouraging other people. There are people listening right now. So when they hear, there's no industry. No one's making any video games. You know how many people throughout Africa who are making games is like, that's not true. Why is he saying that? Stop him. Don't let him say that. Th these are small companies that are making video games. They just do not have the support. You can have an industry that has no support, but just because it doesn't have so no support doesn't mean there isn't an industry. Mm. Kenya makes games. Nigeria makes games. Cameroon makes games. There are game developers here in Ghana. There are game developers all over the continent of Africa. They just do not have any support. So it's more accurate to say we have a we have a rising industry that lacks support than to say we have no industry. Mm. I think, uh, well, I mean, because you see, my challenge is mm -hmm. there are definitely some building blocks that need to be put in place yeah. before you can describe anything mm -hmm. as an industry. Mm -hmm. You can have persons or institutions trying to do things in little, little different pockets. Yeah. But when it is not coordinated, you really can't call it an industry, can you? Depends. Um, how you can call it a large industry, you can have a small industry. There are, there are people who are networking the building of their games into small communities. Mm. But just because it's small doesn't mean it isn't. Mm. It, when you do that, what happens is then you say, well, if there's no large industry, then there is no industry. Mm. So now people are making games, well, well then, this guy's not collaborating with me, that country's not helping me, I'm not getting these resources, so what's the point? And then it's step back. It, in no, because the reason why I ask is, Within an industry, you're going to have graphic artists, you're going to have sound engineers, you're going to have the people who are in charge of visuals, mm -hmm. visual effects, you're, you're going to have all these different components coming together yeah. to, so when, for example, the kid in Tema says, I want to be a game developer, they automatically understand that within, the, the bigger picture is, we have all these little parts interconnected to be able to gets basically a game out so for example prince decides to do a game yeah my first guess is where is he going to market it how is he going to get the the graphic artist 
do we have for example and prince i mean you can you can weigh in on this like yeah. you you live here i can actually literally share some perspective right the game that i created mm-hmm. um, i for instance i'm like a creative director mm-hmm. i'm able to bring out the vision of what i want to make happen mm-hmm. and i bring together people to make that happen right. and within our team we had like programmers you had graphic designers mm-hmm. so that was more or less our own small industry yeah. but after we created our game uh, it was a location based mm-hmm. game that means you had to have people try it out at the location yeah and it was kind of a little bit difficult to get people to try it out, like to take time off that they would, you know, Shadow. and shadows and right. come and try the game. Yeah. Mm. But we still made it happen, we still right. made it work. We had to, you know, make some, you know, take out a GPS aspect for people to try it from their, the convenience of their homes. Mm. But notwithstanding, when I say like there is no industry yet, mm-hmm. it is a budding industry, it is a developing industry, mm. and there is no shortage of creative people in Africa. But I, I believe that what, 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 what is lacking is like, an ecosystem for them to contribute effectively. But it's a connection. Watch it. Watch it. So, Ghana is having a tech summit at the end of this year. Right. Yeah. All right. I'll be okay. There. okay. You'll be there, right? Speaking. Do, games as well. Okay. Now you had asked a question. When you make a game, where do you take it? Is this the first tech summit of Ghana ever? No. Okay. You think this Ghana is the only one doing tech summits on the whole continent? No. Right. So there was, there is a place for gamers to go take their games. Mm. The problem here is that there is no support to have their games pushed elsewhere. If not, that's why I I mentioned Orion the game. How did Orion get their game out from Cameroon? Who who did they go to to market the game? How did they get the game out? They had people, first of all, uh, people don't even know this, that I, when I saw the game online, I contacted Orion and at the time I was in the United States and I said, I wanna help you market the game on social media. And they said, okay, Trevor, uh, thank you, we appreciate the support. And I supported them from all the way in the West. There are far more um, able people with better resources here on the continent that could have done what I did for them. But the question is, who do they go to? It, it's not that it doesn't exist. We just don't know who. It's, it's ignorance. This is what it is, it's ignorance. So when you ask that question, do we have um, a stable industry or, or a viable um, infrastructure where we, these games can um, be done? Yes, we do. We just don't know. And the reason why is because no one is doing There are thousands of princes out there. They just all don't connect together. They don't know. They don't know. They don't know each other's information. I don't understand why we have Google, you know, GTS. You can just Google it and you'll find out people. We have tech summits out of all. The, we have Gamescon. We have all these things. But there's no support. When MTN said, MTN Gaming Conference, boom, everyone appeared. So it's like, oh, so if you build it, they will come. I just want MTN to understand this. And I think I can speak for the African people on the continent. We have been waiting for almost 10 years for you guys to get involved. <laughs> like, we really been waiting. And like, we've been calling. When you travel around, Mm-hmm. and you interact with African game developers like what is the sense that you get from them do they feel that like what's the narrative that you typically get in terms of what sort of games they're developing what sort of um, languages are they developing along like story, I, I story. Th- like the storylines story. like that because is, that is the I mean story. if if you if you meet anybody in the street right now and you ask them what kind of game you play you're most likely going to get like you said you know your fifas your mortal Kombat. those are the games that would typically be bouncing back at you what kind of games are we developing on the continent even before we started shipping it across to the globe we are developing our story in games like every other gaming industry when they make video games they make they take their culture their their society and they digitize it into a game so you can learn about their people and 10 years ago no 10 years ago some of the few developers i knew in africa were just making games that are european based because it's like we have if you want to succeed we have to make european games i'm like that's like saying the japanese are going to make american games they don't they make japanese games american makes american games uh you know chinese make chinese games so africans needs to make african games and just based off this year alone on Twitter, I follow so many different African people who are making video games, um, and all their games are about our story. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Um, and but I think those games need—I don't think those games need to be marketed outside. 
I think we have to establish our own foundation first before we go outside. Because we can take a game, make it here, sell it there, it doesn't work and then it breaks and you can't sell it back here because you started out there. Um, another thing going on culture and I really want to mention this. There's a game called Just Dance. You guys know about this game? Okay. Um, when I watch Just Dance as a game, I play with my wife. People are going to laugh at me. Don't laugh at me. There's a video. This guy, <laughs> this guy Wayne Benjamin made a music video. So I play Just Dance as well. Oh, you do? Oh, okay. Nice well, welcome to the club. All right. All right, good. So as, as long as I'm not alone. All right. Yeah. So, but the music in it is predominantly Western. But when it comes to dancing, and I don't want to hear this from anyone, dancing is Africa. This is the facts. Dancing is Africa, yet there's probably like one or two songs per version of Just Dance that has anything Afrocentric. Not even, it doesn't even come from Africa. It just has African features to it. Mm. How can you have a game called Just Dance that has everything in it but they even have Japanese J-pop songs and K-pop songs yeah. and, and American and European songs, but then, oh, even Latin American songs. Mm. And here or two, you'll have a, 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 a Sean Paul remix from Jamaica, some reggae dance hall, a little something there, but nothing African. Mm. But when you look at the way dancing works today in society, dancing is Africa. So how is it not there? So one of the things I've been doing within the last year or two is trying to get girls in Jamaica, girls here in Ghana, to make their own Just Dance video so that we can put it out there to Ubisoft and say, Africa, come to Africa, come to Africa's hip hop artists, come to Af Africa's reggae artists. We have artists here that invent dances and songs. Get it into the next I game. Us being pro-African, us one, us have wanting to be self-determined to put out our culture so we can share that with the rest of the world does not mean we don't like the rest of the world's culture because we've been consuming the rest of the world's culture for the last 500 years so no one can ever sit here and say we don't like you know western culture we play games like god of war call of duty fortnite zelda mario tetris that's russian japanese european like we've been playing all those other games but not only just Africans, but other people around the world is like, can we try something else? Thank you. You, you took the words right out of my mouth. We developed a series of uh, video games from the African folk tales and, and, and methodologies like, uh, we know, we have like uh, Shango from Nigeria. We have uh, Pharaoh from Egypt. We have Kukanasi from Ghana. I want to give you uh, an example of something. The first thing, I don't want to sound like I'm advertising but I just want people to keep, get a keep an eye on me. <laughs> this is true, this is true. Right. September 14th, hmm. Kwesi TV. There's going to be a three game esports special, right? First time ever done in Ghana. GGC powered by GGC. Right? And I went out to the West and I got a big sponsor from the West to come and sponsor this called Color Switch. It's a um, a mobile game. I don't think can you huh? Color switch. Yeah, yeah the they, color you move. Okay. Yeah, oh, so you know about it. Oh, yeah. whatever. But, and the thing is, they want to come to Africa because they know it's a big mobile market and there's a huge games here and they want to help develop the scene. So I said, then help us, support us with some of the resources. And they sponsored this slot for uh, Kwesi TV. And the big one of the biggest things um, that's going to come out of that event outside of their game and FIFA is the Just Dance competition because we're actually going to get, you're going to see the girls that's going to come in. Well, the guys are going to dance too, but you're going to see how this translates on TV. Because I tried this in America. No, not in America, Jamaica. I literally got Just Dance on television in Jamaica and people were like, what the? And Because, you know, dance hall, everyone's dancing in Jamaica. The, the key here is this. I wanted to take a, um, uh, this will give you an example of how the industry will, will blow up. Marvel Cinematic Universe, or let's call it Marvel Studios has made so many different movies and and let's not count infinity war and we're not going to count endgame because that's all that's those movies are like we're all the heroes together so of course it's going to be popular remove those two games no two games two mm -hmm. movies the greatest time in marvel history with stand alone heroes blade 
Wakanda Forever, which is Black Panther. Right. The two times that they made two black superhero movies were the biggest moments in Marvel Studio history. But you know why? Let's, I don't want to bring racism into it, but let's say there's a majority of white people that are not interested in it. What we have to recognize about entertainment, technology, video games, sports, anything, black people consume more than any ethnic group in the world. So if you make something for Africa, it doesn't matter if the Chinese don't want to buy, it doesn't matter if the Europeans don't want to buy, it doesn't matter if the Koreans don't want to buy, as long as we're interested in buying, it will prevail. And with that, we do wrap up for that conversation. I do hope that you have enjoyed this one. It's it's very clear from the submissions of my guests in the studio today that it's a very fertile ground and sometimes we just don't understand or see the potential of it. All we need to do is to believe in it, invest in it, and support it. That's the base of it. That is the base of it. And the returns will blow your mind. That's just how real the situation is and I do hope that you were able to understand and get those basic facts from it. A big thank you to Isaiah Trifles Johnson and of course to um, Andrew Prince Adaifio. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio and a big thank you for um, sticking to the dream yes. of building an yeah. African gaming industry. Thank you so much guys for joining us. Okay guys, so that concludes our conversation on the economy of the video game industry and how it can affect Ghana, let alone Africa. We had a great robust conversation about where we stand in it and what's the true potential and future of Africa in gaming. I had a great conversation with Prince Andrew and here at CT 97.3 FM, you're going to find out what it is about the African um, culture in gaming and the entire industry that's going to take us to the next level where we can contribute to the rest of the video game industry. Because here at the Lab Video Game TV, our game is never over. Mm -hmm.